Hey everyone, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Today I'm actually going to be teaching you how to fix your orbit in case you have uh, a counterclockwise orbit and uh, a clockwise orbit. If you have a ship going counterclockwise and another ship going clockwise, how the hell do you fix that? Now this tutorial is going to be in regards to that and of course generally in terms of how to get your orbit. Since uh, just to give you more details in terms of how exactly does you getting your orbit uh, work. So when you start up on the launch, you have here 90 degree angle, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and I do believe that might be 360 down there, or zero, zero, that'll be zero, and then 45 degree and 90. So now just to give you an idea, a look at this, and then when you hit M, this is your planet. So if I pull this up, and if I decide to launch, and around 10,000 meters I decide to head 90 degrees, I'm going to be heading perfectly straight here. That's 90 degrees. If I'm going to decide to, at 10 kilometers, go at 135 degree angle, it means it's going to be making an orbit around here, somewhere around there. And if I decide to go at 180 degree angle, I'm going to make an orbit directly like that from top to bottom. This is just to explain to you how this works so you understand why this is happening. And now, in case if you decided to go 270 degree angle, you'll be going uh, left. It means you'll be making, if you go 90, you'll be spinning counterclockwise. And if you'll go 270, you'll go that way. It means you'll be spinning clockwise. So when you are uh, having one ship going counterclockwise and one ship going clockwise, now you understand why that is happening, because it really depended on how you actually launched and how you created your orbit. And of course, if you want to mess about and make satellites, now you know how you can change and launch your orbits depending on where or how you'd like the orbit to be. So 180, you'd get a perfect horizontal one or north to south orbit and 135 degree angle you would again go counter counterclockwise remember this is counterclockwise this half and this is clockwise this half because remember you're flying that way so you're flying up and then flying down and if you're flying this way you're flying up and then flying down so to you it'll be count it'll be clockwise that way and this will be counterclockwise it's simple as that right side of the globe is counterclockwise, the left side of the globe is clockwise. I hope that made sense. This is just to give you the basic info on why that is happening. Now, what I did is on purpose, I launched one of them at 90 degrees and another one at 270. So if you look at my ships, one of them is going clockwise and the other one's going counterclockwise. The one, of course, that's going uh, counterclockwise, I launched it at 90 degrees, which is this. The one that's going counterclockwise, the one that's actually going, sorry, clockwise, I launched it at 270 degrees. So. Now, you need obviously a lot of fuel. You need a lot of fuel to fix this problem. So, uh, this ship has very little fuel, so I'm not even going to bother. It has like 200 units of fuel. You need really a lot of fuel to fix this. So, let's go to our Dumbo ship. Let's go to our Dumbo ship. Actually, first of all, let's go to our Space Center and then jump to our actual Dumbo ship, which is already in space. So, hopefully, it'll load up. And uh, there we go. Now, what you need to do first of all is you need to check your height. Because remember, you're going to be losing a lot of height. What you're going to need to do is you're going to have to go first. Uh, you're going to have to point towards the yellow circle with the cross and burn. You're going to keep burning until you get zero meters per second. And you're going to continue burning. Because once you reach zero, the orbit will switch depending on which way. If you're going counterclockwise, it'll switch to clockwise. If you're going clockwise and you burn until you reach zero, it'll switch to counterclockwise. You know, and you got to keep burning. So you're going to need to switch. And of course, uh, that switch moment, which me means you're going to start losing a little bit of altitude. So you got to make sure you have a lot of like buffer altitude so you don't obviously fly back down to Kerbin or any other moon or planet you're in. So, uh, just to give you uh, an example now, we have Dumbo 2. That means uh, obviously Dumbo is going clockwise. And uh, which means I launched it at 270 degrees and my actual ship that I want to dock with, let's say, is going counterclockwise. So what I'm going to do is go into my Dumbo 2, be like, okay, fair enough. I need to go towards the actual yellow circle with the cross. And first thing, I'm going to check the height. I'm only 148,000 meters high. 
Now, I know from experience with slightly stronger engines, I lose around 60 to 70,000 meters just by adjusting this. Now, with these crappy engines, I'm probably going to lose maybe around 100,000 meters just to switch my orbit. Now, obviously, that means I don't have enough buffer because at 48,000 meters, I already have the atmosphere, which means I'm going to be crashing down to Kerbal. So, first thing I'm going to do is expand my actual orbit. You know, majority of you that'll have this problem realize that you just don't have enough fuel and you will probably either need to send in tankers to refuel your ship to be able to do that or you'll realize the best thing to do is just to cancel the whole ship and uh, relaunch another one. You know, or what you could do is land it, send a tanker there, refuel it and then relaunch it and correctly this time with the correct angle. So uh, that's pretty much it. So hold on, what we're going to do is obviously go to our periapsis, or apoapsis, doesn't make a difference, and burn towards the yellow circle, which increases our, obviously, orbit on one of the sides. So we're going to need to get it at least to 300, 350,000 meters, so I feel safe that we're not going to crash back down to Earth. Now, with these weaker engines, of course, it'll take a little bit of time, but still, we need to get that done. So we're at 200,000. Let's let it go. Maybe a little, even a bit more, because I'm, I'm really worried about these engines. They really do take a lot of time to, to do anything. So uh, any any additional, uh, you can say, altitude I get will be a, a good safe uh, safe buffer for me. So I'm going to try to get as much out of it as possible. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to increase my actual buffer. Now, if you have stronger engines, you don't need such a big buffer. I know that these engines are pretty weak, so they do take a long time to slow down because I need to kill 2,300 meters per second, so that'll take quite a while. So there we have 500,000 meters on this side. Now I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to do the same thing. You know, with, uh, I think, the uh, the L1s, uh, which has, I think, 300 uh, power. Then you have the 240s, I don't even know the name. Those, I, I, I just did an altitude when I was retesting this. I think an altitude of 200,000 meters was enough. But with these weaker engines, I just don't want to risk it, so... Okay, now let's uh, turn to the other side and increase our actual uh, orbit from the other side as well to that 500,000 meter mark. And then we can actually start slowing down and switching on our orbit. Okay, so let's get that done quickly. There we go. Okay. Burn is on the way. We're at 200,000 now. We need to get to at least 500,000 and we'll be good to go. Three hundred thou. Three hundred and fifty thou. Now, what I don't like to do is I don't like to cut the actual scene, so you actually see the whole process in case you might have missed something. At least you see me do the whole thing. I know it might be boring, but this is the way it is. So there we go. It's gonna come there. Usually, it's pretty much the same distance, maybe a little bit more. Okay. And uh, that's it. Now we're done. Now I know I have a buffer. I have a pretty safe buffer, so I shouldn't crash down to Earth. And now I can switch my orbit. Now remember, I'm going... Let's just recheck it. Which way am I going? I'm going clockwise. It means I went to 270. Now i gotta go, Now I got to burn towards uh, the opposite side. Now it really doesn't matter. What you're going to need to do now is go to your apoapsis or periapsis. Make sure that they're equal, so you burn less fuel. Obviously, the lowest one, you burn less fuel. Just go to my fuel efficiency tutorial to understand what I'm trying to say there. And now we're going to burn towards uh, the yellow circle with uh, the cross. Which I think, no, that's that's the yellow circle. The yellow circle with the cross is down there. And we're going to keep burning until we kill off all our speed and the actual orbit will switch. So that's pretty much it. And that I might jump because I think it'll take quite a lot to uh, kill off 1,700 meters per second. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We're at 1,700, 1,000 still 700 okay so it's pretty much takes I don't know uh, 1700 and now we're finally gonna hit it takes probably about 20 seconds for hundred meters per second to kill so I'm not gonna make you watch this what's happening now obviously you see this is shrinking yeah this is shrinking It's gonna shrink then it's gonna form like pretty much a line and then the line is gonna switch my orbit will invert which means no longer will I go clockwise I'll start going uh, counterclockwise and I'll match the actual orbit and remember you need a lot of fuel for this you really need a lot of fuel so I would recommend either you land it you know refuel it and relaunch it correctly or get a get a get a tanker and refuel it while you're doing this 
you know this is the key point you don't really have much the point of no return is when you start doing this burn and when your actual orbit hits Kerbin it means I really have no time as you see now I'm already losing altitude I'm going down see remember up the hill down the hill tutorial if you remember that one now I'm going down the hill so I really gotta hurry up I gotta get my uh, get my orbit to shrink and then then uh, flip flip around as quickly as possible so I am losing altitude that's why I put that buffer I'm at 496,000 meters. I'm going down, uh, you can say slowly, rel relatively speaking. You know, I have still half a million, you know, meters to go, so I'm fine. Now we're at 1,400, and as you see, it is shrinking, shrinking pretty quick. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to come back to you when, let's say, it's like around 500 meters per second. Of course, uh, keep adjusting, yeah, because uh, even if you have the SAS on, it sort of moves out of the actual circle, so try to keep it centered. So you don't waste as much fuel, it's more efficient. So keep that in mind. And I'm back, just to show you now I'm at 600 meters per second. You see it's narrower. It is going to keep narrowing, narrowing down until it's going to pretty much join up as one line towards Kerbin. And then it's going to flip and it's going to reopen up again. And as you see now we're facing 90 degrees. We're facing 90 degrees automatically. And 90 degrees is the point or the opposite. It's the yellow circle with the actual cross. So that's the <coughs> coincidence. I don't know. If you've been going through all my tutorial series, you will sort of understand how all this information links up to each other. So now we're at 500 meters a second. Now, just by looking at this, I made a massive buffer. As you see, I started at 500,000 meters. And now I'm still dropping. I'm at... Uh, where am I at? I'm at 450, so I lost 50,000 meters and I'm still going down. And I haven't even started making my new orbit yet, yeah? And the other question is, do I even have enough fuel? Yeah, I do. You see how much fuel it consumes? I have an orange tank and I pretty much had a nearly full orange tank, so you really need a lot of fuel. Now, of course, the lower you are, the less fuel you need to create such a large orbit, but uh, keep that in mind. I started at 500,000 meters, and now I'm at 442, so that's 60,000 meters off. And I didn't even start creating my new orbit yet, and I still got 300 meters to go. So, uh, this is pretty much it. So this is actually the interesting part now at 300 meters, because it's going to start to narrow down. And then we're going to have that eureka moment when it actually flips, and that's what you need to see. That's how you fix your actual orbit. Now, try to re-watch the beginning of the tutorial when I explain to you how to launch your actual ship to get specific orbits so you don't always have like a 90 degree you can you try try just launching ships with various orbits try making orbits uh, going uh, you know straight up you know going clockwise you know going clockwise pretty much i don't well you can't really make it clockwise if you go in a 180 but going from from the top part of kerbin north going north off Kerbin, uh, going like north around Kerbin, and then make the same launch and going south around Kerbin. You know, try try different orbit ratios so you actually get a feel for uh, actually how how this uh, how this works. You know, try to make and make it an angled one. You know, try try various forms. Don't always pick the typical 90 degree one since now you should understand how how the actual thing works. So yeah. So what's our altitude now? We are down at 427,000. So we are losing, we're probably going to lose at least 100,000 meters, if not more. And we haven't even started uh, making our new orbit. Now let's take a look at our fuel. Half our fuel is gone. As I told you, it's going to need a lot of fuel. So there we go. And here is the Eureka moment. Finally, when it comes to zero meters per second, it's going to flip. And we will be going finally counterclockwise like our other ship instead of clockwise that we were going so far we're going to be joining our unknown spacecraft going counterclockwise so only 135 meters 130 meters to go hundred meters to go and here it is you see it is it's coming close to each other it's going to come close very close 80 meters 90 meters 85 come on and watch it I wish I could get a better angle or zoom in more now they're gonna join up like as one line but they are two they're just now completely in sync and now here comes the switch here comes the switch and they have switched already I think but you just can't see it because they're stuck to each other 
but you guarantee the switch at zero meters per second and then the speed will start going up again okay so now yeah there was the switch you saw a jump and there we go now we have instead of the yellow with the, with the cross now we have the yellow with the circle and now we are going to keep burning towards our 90 degree angle remember we do want a 90 degree angle so let's go 90 we killed off our speed let's have a nice 90 degree angle now let's open it up as wide as possible remember that's why i'm completely at a zero angle with a 90 degree i don't even know if that makes any sense i went completely zero with a 90 you'd have to watch the first one to understand what i'm saying to open up the circle as much as possible okay now again remember i'm still losing altitude yeah i'm at 400 uh, four, 412,000. so i lost 80 90 thousand meters already and i still haven't got my orbit so how's my fuel going by the way yeah it's it's, it's actually I'll, I'll able i'll be able to make this so yeah there we go that was a little bit too much buffer but still a little safer to be better to be safe than sorry i mixed that one up so instead of uh, from the looks of it i'll probably lose 150,000 meters you know i think i should balance out maybe if i go to my ship i'm at 409 i'll probably balance out i'll stop descending at 350,000 meters something like that so to do with these engines with this uh, ship size mass again it's a little bit of you know natural instinct and feel for the actual game you'd have to you know see what ship you have what engine you have how much time it'll take and then you also have to f figure out like what would be the best way to do it you know so yeah so it means i think if i went on an altitude of let's say 300,000 meters it would be fine but but let's see you know i'm at 402,000 and i'm still going down pretty quick so remember i need 2200 meters per second to be able to break Kerbin's orbit pretty easily so i have a long way to go i don't have still enough speed yet it's still going very slow but once i reach the 2000 meter mark you'll see this starting to expand very quickly you don't need 2200 meters to go and i am falling yeah so i am falling down i am falling down so yeah Again, I am trying to, if I burn here, then the yellow circle will move hopefully up towards me. So I am trying to push and provoke the actual line, the, the yellow circle to move up towards where I am. Remember the ball with the air. So I'm still falling and you see it is starting to move up a little bit. So 900,000 meters, I'm at 380,000 meters. Actually, it might even be lower than I thought. You know, I'm already at 1,000 meters per second, so I might actually just get orbit right on time do i have enough fuel for this man I'm, I'm, i might even run out of fuel so yeah thousand meters per second i think i should be fine how much do i have 800 yeah i think i think i should be fine slowly the yellow circle is moving up remember the ball with the wind because i'm burning here slowly it's going to move up It is moving, moving, 1,200 meters. I'm getting a little bit nervous. I'm at uh, 30, 364,000 meters. I said at 350, I'd balance out, so I hope I get it right. Again, that was just a feel. You know, I just estimated it just, just by looking at how it's going so far. So I'd balance out at that altitude. So I really do hope it works out at that altitude. But we'll see. You know, anyways, I do think I have a good enough reserve, so that's fine. We're at 359, nearly there. 1,300 meters per second. We've still got 800 meters per second to go. So, or 800 delta V left. So yeah, there we go. And then of course we can readjust our orbit as always. You burn it, you shrink it back down, and then you can make your maneuvers. You know. Then what you could do is shrink your orbit to go from inside. You know, make 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 uh, one of the one of the orbit lines to connect, which, which which means this one actually that's growing now. I'd make it exactly connect. That would be my intersecting point. And then I'd go to that point, and then I'd make the other one go below. Remember, below my target, so I actually catch up to my ship. So in a way, you could say this is a continuation of your docking again. Okay, so look, here we are. We have an orbit finally. 
Now we gotta make sure that it exactly hits the line. I'm just gonna continue my actual, let's say, docking. There we go. So 85,000 meters, and uh, let's take a look at yeah, 347. So I'm 3,000 meters off. So pretty much I'm I was correct. So that's pretty cool. So this took me 150,000 meters of height it took to make this adjustment. So I need to start off, let's say, at 300,000 meters with this ship. So then I'd finish somewhere around 150,000 meter altitude. Remember, the higher you are, the less fuel you need to burn to make all this stuff, and the less corrections. Like, for example, now I'm going to make a correction to shrink my actual orbit on the other side. So again, the same principle applies with my docking. Let's say, for example, I don't have a docking port, but let's say if I would want to dock. So what I do now is uh, burn on the opposite, which it already is there. It means I'd shrink this. Now remember, I already have the intersect already with the, with the target orbit. So what I need this one, I need this one to go a little bit below. Remember, a little bit below it means I it means I have a quicker rotation. It means I catch up to my ship, and uh, that's pretty much it. Then you set as target, and you do the same maneuvers that I showed you in my other videos. So there's really nothing to it. Shrinking, 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 shrinking. We need it to shrink where we want it. There we go. What's oh that was a little bit too low. So you see now it's shrunk, I have the actual target here, I need to get this back up, and uh, that's it, I'm pretty much done. I'm ready to uh, let time go by, get my encounter as close as possible. Hold on. 61, that's still a little bit low. You do want it around 70,000 meters, so you don't get back into orbit. And then you do your maneuvers. You already know how the deal goes with the actual maneuvers. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this answered your questions. Hopefully taught you a few new things. Maybe you can try out different uh, orbits instead of your typical clockwise or counterclockwise 90 or 270 degree ones. Try try different ones and see how it is. Maybe you can launch up a couple of satellites. So happy gaming. Take care. Bye.